Hello and welcome. My name's Carol Robertson and I'd like to introduce you to equine assisted healing techniques. This is a new psychosensory therapy. It's effective, it's fast and it's very pleasant to do. I've been inspired by the work of Dr. Ronald Rudin and Dr. Stephen Rudin. They've developed havening techniques. This is a psychosensory therapy which has three distinct applications. One is for emotional disturbances and encoded psychological trauma. The second is for wellness, stress management and peak performance. And the third is as a self-help tool. The other great inspiration in my life has been horses and just the amazing healing abilities that they have. So I've combined the two, being with horses, riding them and havening techniques. The video that you're about to see is of an entire session. It's outside, so there's bird song, there's me moving around and the horse moving around and the rider is working with an important issue to her so sometimes she talks quietly and she's very thoughtful. I wanted you to see a real session so please bear with that. For clarity I've talked about the process here and what's happening in the session and spliced it into the film so that you can follow it more easily. So I hope it's helpful to you, I hope it's inspirational to you and please get in touch if you're interested. In this session we're using the client's horse and she likes to ride him in a, in a bridle with a bit. She also has a treeless saddle and that means she can really feel the push from his hindquarters. I'm an insured riding instructor and I use positive reinforcement in my training. I've trained this horse to work with a rope head collar and a heavy line. He's very light in the hand and I don't need to have gloves, I can have a soft contact with him. Normally I'd wear a hat. He's very responsive, I have a good relationship with him and he's just a super horse. After pairing up horse and rider and making sure that they're both comfortable, we start to begin to build rapport and I explain the science of havening techniques and explain that there will be a change in the brain. Then, when the time is right, I ask the client to access a memory that causes some distress. This may be a memory that's popping up and interfering with just her general happiness, or it may be some major event that's happened that's caused some concern. As you can see from the film, she finds one very quickly, and I ask her to access its components. So I ask her to see what she saw, hear what she heard, smell and taste and feel what she felt. When we access a memory, we feel it in the present. We feel the emotional component in the present. And for this, we have a system of measuring this. And we call this subjective units of distress scale. So it's S-U-D-S. So when I ask her this, people learn this very quickly. Um, Zeros at the bottom, it's a bit like if this pen ran out, I just, you know, a bit sad, but I, I expect it to run out, so I throw it in the bin, so it'd be a zero, I'm not bothered. And then the scale rises up to ten, which is at the top of the scale, which is the most distressing. People often say that they're off the scale, um, so it's somewhere on there. So it's an SUDS, and when I ask her, she's able to do it very quickly, and she says that it's a nine. On re-accessing the information in her mind's eye, she feels the emotions more strongly and she says it is in fact a 10. So that's what you can see in this next clip. Think about anything in your life that's upset you. And you don't have to tell us what it is. Just, we've all had things like that. So anything you said or anything about yourself that feels like good enough or all that stuff. See which one comes to you. Okay. Got one? Yeah. Okay. And then what we do is um, think about how sort of unpleasant it is and give it a number. So if it's really unpleasant, say 10 out of 10, and once it's gone away, it will be like 0 out of 10. Oh, about 9 out of 10. So 
think about it, see what you saw, hear what you heard, hear what you felt, the smells and the taste. See if that increases its food time. Yeah, it's Now we move on to the second part of the process, which involves introducing havening touches. There are three main havening touches. One is from the shoulders down to the elbow like this, in a steady rhythm. So the facilitator can apply the havening touches or you can uh, self-haven. The client can apply the havening touches themselves. You can also use the palms. I'm holding mine up so that you can see them, but you would probably have them down in your lap where it's comfortable. I like to stroke the side too. So it's a bit like washing your hands. This one's a bit like when you're cold, or feeling upset or getting a hug when somebody hugs you. And then the third ones are just from the centre out and under the eye here. It's nice and steady. You can do it like that too. And again it's like washing your face, wiping away stress or strains. There you go. So, havening touches, and what they do is they increase the electricity and take the brain to delta wave. And there's a whole science behind this. At the moment, they're just giving you the, the basics. Okay, so that's what you're going to see in this next part of the sequence. Now she clears her mind and begins havening touch. And the next thing I'm going to do is add distraction because we want her to keep her thoughts away from the original upsetting memory. So the distraction is very important. One thing that we can do is get her to visualise a time when she was moving, maybe walking on the beach or dancing or you know, just feeling really good but moving around. And as she's doing that powerful visualisation, perhaps a memory or perhaps imagining sometime, then also get her to do some humming or some singing. So there's an auditory output that's actually spoken. When these two things are happening together, the mind is so distracted that the person finds it difficult to count. And in that way, we know that, they're, that they are distracted. So we're going to keep our mind busy. Riding the horse actually helps that because she's going to think about the horse. In some stages, I'll actually send her off to ride the horse. So she'll be busy thinking about riding. And, uh, and you'll see that happening in this next part of the film. So basically we're doing healing touch and distraction here. Also, 
And as you do it, I'd like you to imagine that you're raising. And as you raise him, it's like one, but imagine in your mind that you're raising him now and giving him. And stroke at the same time. Here you can see us doing some lateral eye movement. So I'm asking her to track my finger all the way this way and all the way this way and so on. Again this increases the electricity and again helps us to take the brain into delta wave. So it fits into the process in that way. I notice by looking at her that some delinking has taken place and change has occurred. So I ask her to remember the original memory and she notices that it's changed. The visual content has altered, has become brighter and her emotional response to it has altered. So when I ask her for an SUDS, she gives a much lower number, she gives it a six which means she feels less emotional about the memory, about what actually happened. So, she, so change is happening, her perspective is changing, her response is changing. Let's just check, so can I move really quick with your brain? So, Think back to the thing that was upsetting. Mm. What number would you give it now? Probably about six. Mm. It's changed. Yeah, it has. Okay. So when you're when you're thinking of it, um, do you see a picture of it, or do you see what? I can see a picture. Okay. And do you know if the picture's changed from last time you looked at it? It looks brighter. From brighter. And is it, is it, how big is it? Still at the same size. Still at the same size. Has it got a frame around it or is it? It's just too Is there sound? No, it's quiet. Uh, how are you feeling? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. First of all, you see if you can get it, or the whole memory to the whole thing. You can sit and sign on it to see what it's like. Can you give it a number? So we're about six. Okay, so it's staying at six. So get it in and switch to your other thing. Okay, good job. And then start your table and cut. Yeah. And start with your shoulder. Now in my hands and all the way back. Look, 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 look
So yeah, so can you, can you check it now? The pictures look really white, like it doesn't have much picture to it. Okay. So it's really hard to imagine it. Yeah. It's a picture number. So can you, is there no number? They're gone. Yes, it's gone. Ooh, it's kind of... It's kind of gone. Is that me? Yeah. It's good, isn't it? See why I like it, isn't it? Cool. Yeah. So, what difference will that make for your life? A big difference. It's not a bad thing anymore. It's okay. just not there. Or if it is there, it's kind of bright. It's not a kind of dark thing to do. Okay. It's weird. You quite like it. It's been all lucky. <laughs> Do you feel calmer? Does she feel a bit calmer inside somewhere or something? So, an impact? Yeah. Yeah. And I think probably with the change, were there other things associated with it? Yeah, I think so. Thoughts. So if you map into them, what are they like? They're not as bad. Are, oh. they, are they changing? They are changing. They're kind of different. So they're not there anymore, like before they were there all the time. Right, what they felt like in front of yeah. you. Yeah. They're not there. Okay. But you know what they were. Yeah. So it's like you can remember them, but. Yeah, but they're not there to, like, properly there. Okay. So would you say that, like, the emotional response has changed? Yeah. 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 Really? That's so weird. weird. <laughs> Okay, so go and write down the game and, and just relax, but just enjoy that. Think about all the good things. With some affirmational havening, when the client inputs. So using havening touch continuously and uh, affirming so saying you know I am good enough I will have a fantastic life this will be easy I can do it I am good enough I am confident I will gain more confidence I can learn and so forth all helpful suggestions are kind of inputting in this case she rode free and the horse moved her so the horse was moving her her legs as they were on the horse's sides were moving but also the push, the great push of the horse's hinds up underneath her is moving her pelvis. And that force coming up through the pelvis goes up the spine, like so right up to the skull. And there's there's a lot going on there. We've got the, the whole pelvic cavity and then this movement going up and the whole uh, oral cavity in the head. So there's lots, lots going on and lots to talk about. But you also saw massive change in her. So she had something that uh, she said was emotionally a 10, so it was at the top of the scale. She described how these pictures were there all the time and they were coming up in front of her face and they were impeding her life, impeding her happiness. And you saw in the session, and it's a short session, it's the equivalent to a normal writing lesson, uh, where the change was that this went all the way down from 6 to 3 to 0. And for her to be saying, my goodness, it's not there. And even in that short space of time, knowing that a great change had happened and that it was going to impact her life in lots of different ways, that it was chained on to other thoughts, other beliefs, and that those were altering too. The film was made nine months ago, and since then she's really done well. She's at a stage in life where a lot of youngsters have find quite difficult, quite challenging, going to college, setting up home for the first time. And she's absolutely sailed through it. She's made new friends, had a good time, getting on well at home as well, you know, in her visits back home. And, you know, even down to rehoming the horse. There's a lot gone on and it's she's handled it really, really well. She says that the memory hasn't come back and that has made a big difference. So what's going on? Havening Techniques has a scientific basis and I'd like to start to explain that to you. And the way to do it that's best, I think, is to also look at some pictures 
of what's going on neurologically. So I'm going to sign off from chatting here now and uh, I'll speak to you on audio while you look at the pictures. Thank you for listening. Dr Ronald Rudin and Dr Stephen Rudin investigated energy psychology and neurology and from their studies they propose a new healing system which is grounded in neuroscience and clinical observation. They call this approach havening, havening techniques and havening means to put one into a safe place. Based on the science and sensory nature of the treatment involved we call havening the use of sensory input to alter the mind and brain. It's a psychosensory therapy. You saw the changes happening to the client in the film and the havening techniques used produced this effect by synaptic depotentiation. This process disrupts the pathway laid down during the encoding of a traumatic event. Havening can also be described with a more scientific term which is amygdala depotentiation techniques, ADT. Literally, receptors on part of the brain called the amygdala are removed. When a person finds themselves in an inescapable situation that has real meaning for them, that they may lose something, maybe their life or somebody they love, or their reputation, and the landscape of the brain, the chemical state of the brain is in the right conditions, we call it kindling, then all of the information that's happening at that moment in that trauma, what they see, what they hear, what they feel, what they smell, what they taste, the language, the abstract, is all involved in encoding. It gets encoded in the amygdala or amygdalae in our brains. This is the position of the amygdalae. The process of encoding actually happens in the lateral nucleus in the amygdala. When a traumatic event occurs, glutamate is released. Phosphorylated AMPAR receptors attach to the activated neuron in the lateral nucleus of the amygdala in the brain. The data related to the traumatic event is encoded. As you saw, we can now remove an encoded trauma using havening techniques. Havening touch produces an electrical 0.5 to 2 hertz delta wave. Voltage sensitive calcium channels open and this leads to the activation of calcium neuron. You can see with the red colour here. This phosphatase is an enzyme that removes phosphorus molecules and this causes the anchored, activated AMPAR receptors to lose their hold on the neuronal surface. They become delinked. And the AMPAR receptors are reabsorbed into the neuron. With the AMPAR receptors removed, stimuli which had produced an emotional response can no longer do so. As you can see the neurons returned to a clean state. So the person is free. For more information about equine assisted havening techniques, please contact me, Carol Robertson, at uh, carol.creative at me.com. If you want to know more about havening techniques, please go to the website www.havening.org.